Royal Holloway University of London PhD researcher Ida Kako, supporter of the Kurdish Freedom Movement as well. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What do you consider to be the significance of the HDP in Turkey? Very short, very briefly. Um, well, really, when I think of the HDP, I think it represents a democratic alternative for Turkey. And I'm not just talking about electoral democracy. So, you know, not just kind of via having a left wing political party that is committed to human rights, that is committed to representing minorities. But the HDP also uses the democratic confederal system inspired by Kurdish leader Abdullah Öcalan. Um, who remains imprisoned, um, to really build grassroots participation and the kind of, you know, a coalition of different ethnic and religious minorities and different communities to create this wide left-wing coalition. And that's why it's so terrifying to the authoritarian system that we see in Turkey. And that's why that system uses racism against Kurds and fears about Kurdish nationalism to build and stoke this opposition against the HDP and justify its anti-democratic attacks. And the more democratic support the HDP gets, the more those attacks intensify. How does the repression and attacks against the HDP indicate about democracy and the rule of law in Turkey? Well, there are a lot of sources of concern um, if we're thinking about democracy in Turkey. Um, and especially in relation to the HDP, you have the kind of subversion of the democratic process by replacing HDP mayors and imprisoning um, elected representatives, you know, elected by the people. You have the mass incarceration of HDP supporters, so thousands of HDP members being imprisoned. You have the continued imprisonment of Salahattin Demirtas, who, you know, is that has been condemned by the European Court of Human Rights. Um, and you have this more recent ongoing attempt to close down the HDP um, via the legal system. So the thing to remember here is that authoritarian states are never satisfied. Um, they will keep going and try to accumulate and consolidate their power. Um, and they will continue to attack democracy, attack the people until we're in a situation where you know, Turkish internal politics and the law serves Erdogan and Erdogan only. That's the future that is kind of imminently upon us. How do you think international organizations can act to pressure their own governments and support the HDP? Like many people, I'm, you know, not overly confident about the capacity of European states um, to to actually form a united front against authoritarianism. I think it's important to keep lobbying for that. But I also think that there really needs to be a concerted effort to build a broad based movement in support of the HDP and in support of democracy in Turkey. Um, the UK government knows that Turkish authoritarianism is not a big concern for the average UK voter. And that's true in, in all European countries. So it's our responsibility to change that. That's the only way to influence the stance of, of our governments and of the European Union. So some ways of doing that, for example, are to support the Boycott Turkey campaign. Um, so not buying Turkish products, not going on holiday to Turkey, and also just expressing these opinions very clearly to, to our political elected leaders. Um, it's not inevitable that Turkey has to be abandoned to Erdogan's authoritarian regime. This is really about a global fight against authoritarianism. And in the UK in particular, it's really important that when we think about how we oppose this proposed crime and policing bill, which seeks to criminalize all forms of political protest, when we try to voice our opposition to the spy cops bill, which makes it possible for undercover police officers to carry out crimes while, while doing surveillance and research on, on political groups. These things are, on a continuum of authoritarianism. And it's important that when we build movements in opposition to the authoritarian 
attempts to attack popular movements that the UK government is making, we also draw attention to the attacks done by the Turkish state and really see this as a global issue because authoritarianism empowers these attacks on freedom across the world. It's really a system in which states support each other in actually attacking our freedoms. Another concerning issue is rising about Turkey, and I would like to speak to you about this as well as the violence against women is increasing under the Erdogan regime in Turkey. How does the how does that concern you, and how do you comment on the Turkey's withdrawal from the international treaty on combating uh, w violence against women, the Istanbul Convention? The important thing to remember is that women always suffer when authoritarian regimes are in power because the state is inherently patriarchal um, and the more power the state has, the less power women have to fight against the violence and the abuse and the oppression that we face in our lives. So Turkey has withdrawn from the really ironically named Istanbul Convention, um, which seeks to combat violence against women and particularly um, combat domestic violence and this has been seen in Europe in kind of two ways so a lot of framing has been that this is just a result of Turkey's internal politics and the pressure that Erdogan is facing from Islamist and conservative political groups um, or it's been seen as a kind of inevitable and logical step in the ramping up of Erdogan's powers you know in this way of well of course he's going to attack women of course he's going to roll back on these protections and these human rights that women have been given by the Istanbul Convention as flawed as it is. Um, but it's really important to not just focus on this idea that it's internal policy or that it's logical and inevitable. It's important to see the bigger picture because everywhere states abuse women and they ignore the violence that women face. And Turkey is a part of this global continuum again of violence against women. And the way we stop violence against women is really a total revolution in society and in our minds. It's an eradication of patriarchy at every level. It's important not to cling on to the Istanbul Convention as some kind of life raft that will rescue women from, from the violence that we face. Um, and it's also important to not see this rollback as inevitable and somehow therefore inconsequential or just part of a bigger fight. Actually empowering women, and I really mean empowering not just through, you know, having women in positions of power, but building that power from the grassroots, collective power um, and political power for women means that you know that's how we fight patriarchy and the hdp has shown a commitment to doing that kind of work from building you know women's uh, participation in democracy from the grassroots and that's why again it's so threatening to the turkish state dear ida kako um, royal holloway university of london phd researcher and the supporter of the Kurdish freedom movement. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for your comments today. Thanks for having me. Thank you.